many movies have been made about the passion of the Christ, but none that capture, I believe, this moment that we have just read more amazingly than Mel Gibson's version called The Passion of the Christ. Now you may have your own opinions about what's best, but for me, Jesus gets to this moment having gone through everything in his ministry, having done everything that his father has told him to do, and now is the moment of sacrifice. He has known that this was coming. He has tried, he has tried to have his disciples be ready for this moment. Which is why when they were eating just moments before what we call the Last Supper, what Jesus would have called the Passover Supper, he took part of that supper and he gave it a new meaning. And he said the words that are on the front of this cloth that we have up front here, do this in remembrance of me. Remember, when you eat this, when you drink this, the normal things that you do every day, remember that I did this for you and I did this with you. Well, Jesus is now in the Garden of Gethsemane. His soul is in anguish and he is asked his three best human friends. To watch and to pray with him. He goes off and he asks his father, can this cup, <laughs> it's, it's a metaphor folks, it's a metaphor for his life, for his mission, for the thing that he is now going to do, which he as a human, I am sure, has been dreading. He does not want to be beaten. He does not want to have a crown of thorns plaited and pushed into his skull. He does not want to go through the humiliation. This is normal human reaction. But he, as we have determined, is 100% God and 100% man. And so he's talking to his father as he has done throughout his human mission here on earth. And he is saying, can we do this another way? We are told that God, his father, sends angels to minister to him. Otherwise, this weight would have killed him there and then. My eyes turn immediately to his three good friends who are in a food coma. Come on now. Just watch with me this little time. Jesus, Jesus has to ask them how many times? Do you remember? Twice and then the third time he says, it's too late. They're already coming for me, see? And they looked over there, and fear struck in their hearts because here came the temple guard to arrest Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, and his words came true at that moment even for his three best friends. They abandoned him. They ran away. My friends, um, as you have witnessed this baptism today, as we are about to have an opportunity to participate in the little meal that we have fashioned to remember that Passover meal, I have a few words for you. One is remember. Remember where Jesus was on that day. Remember where his disciples were. And if you are a card-carrying disciple of Jesus today, this is a moment to say to yourself, what would I do in that situation? Would I be like Peter and say, oh no, Lord, I'll never leave you? And then yes, he was the one to draw a sword. 
He was going to protect his Lord. And, and, and he does. He tries to kill the high priest's servants. That, that was not, an, uh, that was not a, 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 an ear blow. No, the, the servant ducked like this because Peter was coming for his head. And the sword caught him on the side of the head and shaved off his ear. And Jesus stoops down and as the creator God picks up that ear which he created and puts it back onto the head of the high priest's servant in Peter's presence. And Peter still didn't get it. Where would I be? Where would we all be? Do this he says, in remembrance of me. Another time that we are very familiar with the word remember is the Sabbath. Remember the Sabbath. I would say to you today that as we remember the Sabbath, we remember our relationship with the Creator God. We remember our commitment to depending on Him. Thirdly and lastly, we read in Psalm 130, I would add the word remember. Remember that he forgives us when we don't stick by him. He has mercy upon us. Even in his hour of need, he thought of his friends First, see him on the cross there, strung between heaven and earth, and he says to John, the disciple, John, dude, this is my version, dude, can you take care of my mother? Thanks. He knows that his moment of death is fast approaching because he said, I will lay down my life and I will take it back up again. No, the Romans didn't kill him. No, the Jews didn't kill him. He laid down his life for you and for me on purpose. When that centurion came with the hammer to break his legs, he was already dead. Centurion didn't believe. So he took his spear and stuck him in the side just to be sure he wasn't faking. And Luke tells us blood and water flowed out because he was already dead. His heart sack had exploded under the pain and agony of his situation. My friends, he left it all there on the cross. But hallelujah, Psalm 130, my friends, is a psalm of ascent to the hill of God. Not the hill of Golgotha, but the hill of God where we worship and where we have hope and where we have joy and where we have redemption. And it's all because of Jesus. So if you do nothing else today... I want you to remember when you first said yes to Jesus. And remember that we have an opportunity right now to say yes to Jesus again. The Seventh-day Adventist Church, this preacher teaches the priesthood of all believers. So yes, we have two freshly minted members and we have a congregation of believers. So what I'm going to tell you is that as a believer in Jesus Christ, you are commissioned to pray for your wife, your husband, your children, your friends. Because I'm the preacher doesn't give me any advantage when it comes to kneeling at the throne of God. Don't think that when he sees me coming, he is any more happy than when he sees you coming. And if you don't believe that, uh, I've got a church down the street that you might want to join. Because they teach that. Okay? 
But we teach that each one of us is called to be a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that our prayer for our sisters this morning is very much like an ordination. It's God doing something in someone's life and the church saying, look what God is doing. That's what we did this morning. We did a baptism and now we have the chance to wash feet. This is why I said to the adult class that I was teaching this morning, don't run away now, please. I know, and I'm saying this just for Michaela, my daughter. Some people think that feet are icky. Ugh. But I dare say that most feet in this audience have been washed in the last 24 to 48 hours. And you probably wore socks and shoes, or maybe just shoes, and you probably didn't walk through 10 miles of dust. So your feet are probably not that dirty. You may not have had your toenails painted, but see, this is all this modern stuff. Please understand that Jesus came to wash his disciples' feet at that Last Supper as a way of saying, I serve you, you serve me. This is the way of Jesus, is to serve each other. Bill Hybels wrote a book, I really like it, it's called Descending, see my finger, it's not going up, it's going down. Descending into greatness. That's what Jesus showed us. It's opposite of the way that the world works. We think we need to climb the corporate ladder. Jesus says, no, 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 my ladder goes down. Remember Jacob's ladder in the dream that Jacob had? Did God go down or up to see Jacob? He came from heaven and he sent his angels down to see Jacob. He calls us to do the same for each other, to pray that the Holy Spirit would be part of each other's lives. I'm going to ask that you all choose someone to bless in the next few minutes, okay? Uh, deliberately tried to keep everything short. Grab a hold of someone. It can be male, female. We have in classroom C a place for men who would like to wash feet with men. And then in the fireside room, which is directly down the end of the walkway here, there's a place for ladies who want to serve a lady. And then in the uh, MPR, or our multi-purpose room, we have tables and, well, tables and chairs set up for lunch, but we've used some of those chairs for families. If you want to come as a family and you just want to be together as a family, please go to, to that room and you can be uh, of service to each other. Now, I want you to know, I'm going to just speak plainly with you at this time and just say, I know that this is a crazy thing for modern 2019 people to be doing. We, we don't see the significance, but I hope that you can grab a hold of this biggest piece Number one, this is an opportunity for recommitment, just as much as getting baptized. People have come to me in the past and they've said, Pastor, I'd like to be rebaptized. My simple question to them is, did you ever kick Jesus out of your life? And most of them have said, oh no, Pastor, I never did. Well, I said, you know what, there's a time four or five times a year when we have communion. Come to communion and be recommitted to Jesus. Wash someone's feet and let them wash your feet and pray for you in the name and the power of Jesus Christ. That's the opportunity that I'm offering you right now. I'm offering you the opportunity to minister to somebody else in the ceremony. This is a ceremony that we did. We baptized by immersion. Now we wash feet and we immerse our feet. And like Peter, maybe some of you are saying, but no, pastor, I need to be baptized. I need to be totally... Well... Jesus said to Peter, no, no, I don't need to give you a bath. You've already had one. I just need to wash your feet and show you that I am a servant to you and that I'm asking you to be a servant to everyone else. You know where to go. You know what your options are. We'll see you back here and we will eat some bread and drink some grape juice. Thank you. <laughs>